What's going on everybody? Welcome to the Flight Sim Deck. My name is Patrick and this is Skyvector.com. I get asked a lot what I use for flight planning and this is what I use. I head over here and they took all the aeronautical charts of the world and they built this uh, full real-life scale map of all the charts. In hindsight it looks like Google Maps but once you start to zoom in you will see that they mapped out everything and a lot more and I'm gonna get into all that stuff this is real-world stuff here this is why I like to use it and um, you know if you want the the real flight sim experience uh, this is the way to go so let's start with layers now by default a few of these are already on I think this one the flight restrictions and the segments are already on now the this one the text weather these are all the main weather stations and airports that are going to be giving off weather. You can click on any of them and you can either add it to the plan or you can click on the airport here. It'll take you to a page that will tell you all about the airport. It'll have all the charts and everything. So it's kind of a one-stop shop for everything you need for your flight. Um, also they have different uh, flight restriction areas. Uh, I know for instance in San Francisco there's an air show going on this weekend and they are restricting that area. If you hover over it says aerial demonstrations up to 15,000 feet it will be live in 52 minutes. It also tells you when there's a fire going on. There's a fire here, another fire over there, and uh, some other security warnings of restricted airspace. These uh, normally have to do with weather like this one is referring to the hurricane going on in Florida right now. Click a couple of these off. Um, icing. This tells you where it's icing up, where you need to be turning on that anti-ice. You can click on it and get even more information. This one is the turbulence going on. So you can plan for that. Again, you can click and read. Pilot records. Skip that one. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is um, reports from pilots and they go all over the all over the place um, I guess there's more in the US um, than over in that area they're kinda of sprinkled through but again you hover over those this one's saying there's light chop at 380 is reported 38 minutes ago this one is light chop at uh, 360 so somebody was probably descending through this way and reported those and also they're reporting uh, broken layers, overcast, um, light to moderate chop at 210. So that's very cool that they have that. Um, these are just uh, shows where you, you, know, you need to fly with uh, instrument flight rules. Um, let's get in the weather radar, which is pretty cool. I'm going to turn the satellite on too. Actually, I'll leave the satellite off. Let's do the normal weather radar. This is the hurricane right now. It's hitting Florida, Hurricane Matthew. It's going to be going up through um, North Carolina, too. So that's even more awesome about this is that you have weather radar. You can also turn on the satellite radar, and uh, you get a, a much different image here. It even shows the clouds moving in, which is very cool. Very, very good for planning. And that's just when that one's not very important. Uh, you can turn on the different uh, North Atlantic tracks. FBOs, this is about fuel prices. And uh, how much it's going to cost, where you're going, and all that stuff. Let's turn off the layers. Let's come over here to flight plan. Um, you can close it like that. You can click this, brings it back up. And I'm going to show you how to do a flight. Uh, plan. So let's go from Charlotte to Memphis. And when you do that, it'll draw a straight line from airport to airport without the waypoints. Now they also have routes saved. You can click here, and here are some routes that they've already created, and you can add those in but we're going to create our own route. So we're going to go uh, we're going to depart on the Bob 7 
Then we're going to go here. Just bear with me while I type this all in. And then Clark. And once you type it in like this, it'll be all lowercase, um, and it won't show yet until you click in one of these other boxes. And then it creates the plan, as you see here. Now, if you need anything, like I, I kind of showed you earlier, you can click Charlotte, and right here it has all the different um, departures and arrivals. You can click the airport and you get everything you need about it. I mean, here's the the main airport chart, all the frequencies, all the different runway information you would need. And then down here they have every single chart. So, it's a this is a great place to start for flight planning. Same thing with Memphis if you click that. Now, also let's add in our speed. We'll be going uh let's say 300 knots. We'll go up to 360, and the fuel, let's put like 9 on that. And now it's updated with all that information. Now also if you want to add waypoints, there's a, another way to do that. You can kind of click this and drag it anywhere, and wherever you let go, it'll show you the uh, nearest VOR, the nearest intersection, airport, and you can click one of those and then it draws a plan for you over there. So I'm going to do that again, we'd put one up here, hit that intersection, and it'll build a, a point there for that. Now this is just for demonstration that I created that, I'm going to leave it anyway, and uh, now, after doing that, you can you can save these if you have an account which is free to make. You just make one with your email and everything. And then you can save plans, load plans, then you can come back to them. So you can build them and then uh, later on come back and load the plan up. Now if you click here, Navlog, this is very cool. You can either print this out, put this up on an iPad, and this shows you everything from that plan. It shows you, you know, the wind direction, the wind speed, the temperature, your ETA, uh, where your top of climb is, your top of descent, Although, I don't think that top of descent there is, uh, well, no, that's probably right, actually. No, that's right. Never mind. My bad. Um, yeah, all this information. You can you can add in your, your fuel and write on it. Also includes the two main airport charts, the diagrams. So let's get out of there and get back to Sky Vector. Okay. So, now that I've talked about that, um, and you've seen that, you can also add the times in here, your tail number, we need to be logged in to do that. And uh, yeah, guys, now you have a plan, and we could go, well, we're going this way from Charlotte, all the way over to Memphis. Now... Unfortunately, this does not connect up with um, Prepare 3D or or Active Sky. You can save these out to um, let's see, Send Plan Two. You can send these to different apps you may have on an iPad or something. Which is what I do is I have a laptop open when I fly, and I'll have this loaded up, and I've kind of followed along on the on the um, laptop. A lot of pilots in real life use iPads and they would send it out to you know this is the Garmin file and they'll send it out to that and use it on the iPad. But if you have a laptop or a second monitor you can just use that and follow the flight plan. 
But okay, guys, uh, this is Spin Sky Vector. This is what I use. I uh, hope you guys uh, found this informational. It's, um, it's a great way to plan your flights. I mean, the only downside is that you can't move the plan into the programs, but, you know, that's all right. This is just a little, um, little extra cool thing you can do. Okay, guys, hope that helped. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care.